Hey, traders, this is Blake Marr with Traders Summit. And with me today, I have Tracy. Oh my gosh. St pause. I'm done. Hold on. Well, I'm going to do that again. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> Thank God we can edit this out. My God. All right. Shoe cart. Jesus. Cheese and rice. All right. Here we go. Ready, Trace? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Traders Summit. And with me today, I have Tracy Shukart from Hedge Fund Telemetry. How are you, Tracy? Good to see you. Good. Good to see you again. Hey, you staying warm up north? So, yeah. I mean, if zero is warm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it could be worse. It can always be worse, right? Right. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us today. And I, you know, last time we spoke, we talked about a lot of different things and we were talking about some, some trades that you were looking at south of the border. And, um, but we were also talking about crude oil and, you know, crude's kind of stalled here around the 200 day moving average. And do you have any thoughts for us regarding crude currently? I know we, there's other things that we want to talk about, but what do you, how do you feel about crude and where we're at? Well, I'm still, you know, I, I kind of, I expected a sell off just because, um, you know, it, seasonality, um, obviously I didn't expect a $10 move in a, a day, right? That was a big one. Yeah. <laughs> On a, th a thin market and, uh, and Thanksgiving. Um, so I, obviously I did not expect that. Um, but, um, but I did expect to pull back and that's why when everybody was saying, Oh, hundred dollar oil by the end of the year, I just didn't see that as a possibility. And I've, I've always looked at that sort of goal, you know, out in, uh, 2022, um, 23. So, you know, look, look, and, and I, I just want to point out just from a, 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 a technical analysis perspective, I mean, we are trading above the 200 day moving average and, and, it, in in you know, all basic technical analysis, you know, rules, we're, we're still actually making lower highs, uh, excuse me, higher lows and higher highs. So, I mean, technically it's yeah. still bullish. I mean, I, I would say it's still bullish. You had that, um, you know, nice pin bar, right? Reject out of, um, out of a, a, a demand zone, right? If we kind of cap that off there, right? Yeah. So we had a nice reject out of there. I mean, I think we'll probably go sideways here for, for a little bit, right? Until, uh, I mean, most of the longs were shaken out. If you look at like the COT reports, um, you know, most of those longs got shaken out on those, on those big moves. We had some shorts kind of enter the market. Um, but overall, OI has significantly decreased just as a total. So really, I think the market's just sitting here waiting for clues to see, you know, are we going to have more closures because of Omicron? Are we going to, you know, kind of uh, until we get a little bit clearer picture on the global picture, you know, I think the market's going to be kind of laying in wait um, until we can find buyers to step in again. So yeah. let, let me ask you this. Are there any headlines that we should be paying attention to regarding crude oil, especially if those of us that are focused on it? Well, yeah, I mean, well, obviously you want to look for, watch for lockdowns and things of that nature, or if we find out that, you know, um, this is, you know, indeed more mild, like they say, and it's okay, and, you know, um, you know, and we don't see any more closures or, or anything of that nature. Obviously, yeah. you want to be looking at those kind of headlines. Um, but overall, I mean, the fundamental picture remains very strong. I mean, we were still have, you know, OPEC still has um, very low spare capacity um, going in. We have, um, you know, we're, we're expected to see uh, production in our demand increase, right? We've had seven years of no CapEx. Um, so fundamentally, still, the market is very tight. We're still seeing uh, Vortex of Global offshore uh, inventories. We're still seeing those kind of, you know, at, at the lows. Um, all that excess from 2020 has already been drained off. So, you know, you know, I just look at, you know, concentrate on oil inventories, not only in the United States, obviously, uh, but, uh, you know, globally as well. Awesome. Well, thanks for thanks for the update on crude, because I think you're right. It, it, it did shake out a lot of people. But now that it has, you know, maybe we've got, you know, firmer footing at these levels. So what do you what do you what else are you looking at and right you now? Had the, oh, the Saudi oil minister, sorry, oh, <laughs> and yeah. you had the Saudi oil minister come out to again and say Thanksgiving was Thanksgiving, but 
don't yeah, try to do that again else you'll be quote unquote ouching like hell oh and wow literally that's what he said last year in September of 2020, after that September 17th OPEC meeting, he basically said, don't be gambling on these markets. I'm going to keep traders on their on their toes, you know, or you're going to be ouching like hell because he was talking about people trying to short the market. And so, and, and I immediately again. after that, I immediately loaded up long on oil equities <laughs> everywhere. And it's been a it's been a good trade. And and so the, those headlines are are prevalent today then. So, yeah, I mean, you know, there, there is a warning there. I mean, they did leave the meeting open. It's this, the meeting is still open, meaning that at any time between now and the next meeting, if they decide to change um, anything, you know, as planned, like their 400K that they added, um, they're willing to do that. And this is the first time they've ever kept an actual meeting open. Wow. All right. Well, so they're ready. To, they're ready to act. Right. And so uh, I believed them last time and I believe them again. <laughs> All right. So that that's going to be a warning to anybody who's trying to short crude oil, crude oil at current levels. That's something to definitely keep in mind. So uh, what, what are the other names that you're paying attention to right now? Is there anything else that stands out to you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm also looking at um, like Devin is one of my favorite uh, oil oil plays right now we might as well do an oil play since we're talking about yeah oil, let's do it right um and so um and so right you know you can kind of see we're kind of stalling out here i mean it's been a nice ride up um we got in about ten dollars um last september um and kind of rode that up um, but it, I mean, this is a longer term hold for me. I think there's, you know, I think there's more room to run. I mean, obviously we have some consolidation here. If we pull back a little bit, I'm okay with, you know, I'm okay with adding to the, adding to the position, but, um, so far, I mean, structurally this it's still bullish. You know, what's really uh, from a technical perspective, Tracy, one of the things that's really bullish here is that even though you get a consolidation, you take like a, just a very basic indicator, like relative strength, when it goes neutral, that means it's worked off all those overbought signals. So now it's neutral again, where it could therefore uh, continue rallying from here. Uh, and the relative strength is not there to stop it. So that's that's another good look. I, and I like the fact that you you're in a you're in a long position and since you called it at ten, and here you are looking to even add to those positions. That's that's a pretty bullish call. So yeah, I am pretty bullish on this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what what else are you looking at then? So and then we can move to say the metals market. We can look at um at look at Vail and. There's Vail right here. Now Vail's been beat up a little bit, and uh, and and we're we're back above the 50-day moving average. Um, so you, are you you finding Vail more as a value play at this at this stage? So I'm, yeah, it's more of a value play. We pulled back. Okay, right. We had that big iron ore dive, right? Yes. Because of China. So we had a huge pullback in Vail. Um, what I do like about it is not only you know are they sort of an iron ore producer, but they're also a copper and nickel producer. And looking forward into EVs, right, we're going to need a ton of copper and nickel, not only for uh, vehicles themselves, but vehicle batteries. Um, and I also love a really nice dividend stock. And this is a very nice dividend stock. Oh, well, that's always good. And, right. and, and so if this is a copper slash, uh, you know, iron ore slash play. I mean, you look at how well it's tracked copper over the course of the last couple of years. You know, we've had this pullback in, in Vail, uh, but copper's really just maintained its gains and is consolidating at higher levels. So maybe it plays a little catch up, right? Yep, that's what kind of what I'm thinking. And and it's a nickel play too, so. That is um, awesome. All right, well, I like Vail. What, what else are you looking at? So then also I'm looking at, um, KRBN, which is a carbon market. Yeah. Right? It tracks it tracks carbon futures basically. Um, and mostly um, in the EU markets. What I like about this stock is that, you know, I, I'm glad we're seeing a pullback actually here. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it went a little bit parabolic and I, you know, I'd like to see it retrace a little bit. Um, you know, maybe, you know, maybe even down to like you know, 46, 44 would be ideal. Um, 
But uh, going into, well, obviously, you know, with all of this energy transition, right, there, yeah. we're going to still be needing to purchase a lot of carbon credits. And after COP26, what they said is starting in 2022, um, the EU is going to start policing um, the carbon credit markets, because what was happening is there was a lot of double counting there and people were cheating and it was kind of running rampant, right? So if they start policing this, that means that there's going to be more transparency in the market and that's going to force companies to have to buy even more carbon credits because they were kind of cheating before. Wow, um, that, that's, that's a hell of a play then. So, yeah. So, you know, if we can get a retrace done in that area, you know, I think it would be a perfect place to, to, to get long. Wow. That's, a, that's cool. And, you know, you're right. As far as from technicals, you know, you, you hate to see, you hate to be bullish and see something go completely parabolic. Um, right. Cause if this is going, <laughs> if this is going to continue higher, you know, you get a little pullback, you get a little reset, you get a little consolidation and then it can resume that uptrend. I like that. And, and what's the last one on your list that you were looking at? And so, and then DBA, yeah, I was looking at which is the um, it's the agricultural um, ETF, and it tracks um, all the majorly traded uh, uh, agricultural futures markets. So you know, corn, wheat, um, live cattle, cotton, um, and soybeans. All of them. Basically. You know, just just look looking at the chart here, and I'm gonna Tracy. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom. This is actually a weekly chart. I want to just take this out so people can really see. You know, one of this is a great bullish call in my view from a from a technician standpoint because it broke out of what we call a descending wedge, right? And that's a very very bullish sign moving forward. And if you're if you're in the um, the persistent. Uh, commodity inflation uh, pressure camp, then I think the uh, DBA might be a wonderful, wonderful idea that uh, brought to you from Tracy. Yeah, I mean, and, and we're, you have to think also, you know, on the fundamental side of this, um, you know, what we're seeing is with the, all these, you know, ammonia sky high right now, fertilizer prices are sky high right now. Um, you know, not I'm hearing people aren't getting their full allocations of fertilizer and things like that. There was, um, they're now looking for a manure to replace fertilizer because it's, you know, so expensive. But what's going to happen is that's going to affect crop yields over the next 12 to 18 months. Um, so on the fundamental side, that it's very bullish as well as technically very bullish. Wow, what a lot of great views here with, with you today, Tracy. I, I I really like it, and um, I love the fact that you. It seems like you always find these value plays, things that not everybody is actually looking at, which keeps. Um, I think is is a great way to be viewing the market, especially in a in a in a in a you know in a market right now where it becomes more of a stock pickers market uh, versus more of a trending market for everything. I mean, you look at you look at some of the major indices and you got the IWM that's kind of going sideways where you have just a couple stocks just really, you know, leading the charge higher. Um, it, it becomes a little tougher. So you bring in these opportunities for the community here at Trader Summit is awesome. So let me ask you this, as we go into the end of 2021 and we into the beginning of 2022, what's going to be your real focus going into this early next year? What are you, what are you really going to be paying attention to? So, I mean, so really, I mean, obviously the commodities markets really what I'm going to be paying attention to because um, generally, you know, all of our commodities kind of um, seasonally take a little bit of a, a, a of a dive um, into the end of the year, and then you know, then they start picking back up in January. Obviously, that you know that makes sense that you know people are winding down things for Christmas in general, right? Um, yeah. And um, the new year, they start getting back into the market again. But um, so, you know, I, I'm keeping a close eye on all the fundamentals as far as the commodity mar markets are concerned. I mean, we're in kind of a crazy macro environment right now, right, with um, the Fed tapering. And then are they or are they not going to raise rates? You know, I, you know, we've got three rate hikes, they think, next year. I personally can't see that really happening unless they want to sacrifice the market. So, um, so it'd be very interesting. 
Yeah, it is going to be an interesting <laughs> backdrop going into 2022. So with that being said, Tracy, I really would love to have you back at the beginning of 2022, especially once we get past this Fed meeting and we get past the holidays right. and Santa's come and gone already. Uh, <laughs> I want to I want to get your views of um, of uh, how you feel about the market early next year. But before I do that, um, if I'm a trader and I want to follow you between now and then into the end of the year, how do I follow you specifically? Well, I'm on uh, I'm on Twitter at shy girl C H I G R L and then um, I'm also at uh, hedgefundtelemetry.com. Um, I write a well I do a bi-weekly sometimes tri-weekly uh, reports um, on energy and materials. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending your time with us. And guys and gals, if you like what Tracy does here, give her a thumbs up, especially if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of her content or any of the content we put out here on, on Trader Summit. Tracy, thanks for uh, joining us and happy holidays to you, you and, and, and be safe and be merry. You too. All right. Thanks for joining right. us today. We'll see you in 2022. Thank you. Hey traders, Blake Morrow here. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also click the bell notification so you do not miss any of our market-related trading analysis from some of the leading industry experts. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.